Hello, welcome to Church Trip Creations. I'm your host, Mr. Steele. Today I'll be teaching you all about minimalist art from the 1960s, specifically the sculptures. The first thing I'll talk about is one historical concept that informs two design characteristics that we'll later use in our art project. For this project, we'll be basing it on the, the relative size of our toys. So I have this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle and my sculpture is going to be two to three times the size of my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. And we'll be able to use reusable objects found in our recycling bins throughout our homes. For example, I might use a paper tube or a shoebox. I can't wait to teach you this lesson. So go ahead and keep watching and make some art. First, you might be thinking what minimalism is and what these sculptures might look like. Let's take a look. Minimalism is an art movement that focuses on art being simple shapes and colors. Minimalist art does not try to imitate reality, like when you would try to draw a house or a plant. Instead, they use geometric shapes like you can see on the current sculptures on the screen, like squares, circles, and triangles. This is because the artist wanted the viewer, you, to respond to the art's color, medium, and size. How would you feel walking up to something so huge that it makes you feel small? It's kind of like when you look out at, out of your window and you see a huge tree outside your house. Well, imagine instead of that tree, it's a huge cube, like one of Solowitz cubes. I think that would be crazy to see inside of an art gallery. Check out this leaning sculpture. It looks like it could be tipping over onto that lady any moment. It's made by Richard Serra and is called TTI London. Okay, so we know these sculptures were large and filled rooms that people would walk into, like an art gallery. But what compelled these artists to make large sculptures made out of geometric shapes? Well, have you or your siblings or friends done something that made you mad? And you say or do, do something in response to what they did to you? That's kind of like what these artists did when they started making minimalist sculptures. They were responding to art that was popular at the time by making something totally different. For example, they were responding to Jackson Pollock and other abstract expressionists. They didn't like how the abstract expressionists were using expressive line and lots of color. So the minimalist artists decided to focus on something totally different. Monochromatic color or one color and flat geometric shapes. Kind of like Carl Andre with his 144 magnesium squares. He used crisp edges for his geometric squares and pretty much the same gray for each square. Let's look at another one. Robert Morris's Untitled and each square on the cube is the same color. It's like a shiny silver because it's a mirror and each cube has a defined edge. Okay, now that we've seen how these sculptures are made and what inspired the artists, we can make our own minimalist inspired sculpture that interacts with the space our own toys occupy, kind of like how these sculptures were made to occupy the space that we are in in the art gallery. This means that when you're done making your sculpture, your toy can interact with the sculpture kind of like how we would in real life. In the beginning of this video, I showed you this paper tube I had. Now, in order to get that monochromatic color, I decided to use some purple paper that I had in my bedroom. And I have some masking tape, but you can use scotch tape, glue, whatever you have on hand. I'm gonna do the paper long way, like long, the long way, that way it can cover the whole tube of, of the paper towel. I'm going to match it up on the end and I'm just going to tape it down the middle. Then I'll roll until it completely covers the paper tube. Now if you don't have construction paper, you can always take line paper, drawing paper, or computer paper and color it one color with a crayon, marker, whatever you have. 
Okay. I think I'm going to tape it two more times on each end. Okay. So I just taped this corner into the tube. And then I have more paper coming off the edge. So I'm just going to poke it inside. I'm just doing this to save tape. I saw this shoe box and I thought it might be pretty fun to cover in paper. Okay, I just started to tape the first side on for you. And then I think I'm gonna put one on the top. And then I'm choosing the shoe box because it has crisp edges just like the sculptures I showed you today. And then the shoe box bends a little bit, so I'm just gonna tape it over the crease. Yeah. And then I'll just push my fingers along to get nice to get it nice and bent. And then we'll grab another sheet. tape on there. And I'll tape it on. And if you use clear tape, you won't be able to see it as much as this masking tape I have. I just decided to use this masking tape because it is what I have on hand. Okay. And then we have the back side, so I'm wrapping this around. Kind of like how you would wrap a present. Taping it on. When I'm finished taping, I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I just taped all the way around the box. And now I just have the sides of the box to do. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my box and my paper, and I'm going to roughly tear the edges so I can get the same size of paper to tape over it. I folded the paper around the, the side of the box and now I'm just going to rip it. If you're allowed to use scissors, you can use scissors, but I'm just going to rip it because it doesn't have to be perfect. After ripping it, I put four pieces of tape around the edges so I could just go ahead and plop on this to the side. Just like that. Okay, I just taped all around the sides of the box and the top. The next is the inside. I'm going to show you how to make a circle ring for tape. So you can just go ahead and put it on the back of your paper, just like that. Go ahead and take your tape, pull on it, get a size about a couple inches, and then you just take it, see how it's already curling up, finish the curl, just like that, and you have a circle. So, I'm having you do it like that. That way, you can just press the paper right into the inside of the box. Boom! We already have a purple geometric cube going on for this sculpture. I'll show you when the rest of the box is done. Some of the sculptures we looked at today had pieces that were leaning. I think I'm gonna do that too with those cylinders I wrapped earlier. I'm gonna put some tape on the bottom and then I'm just going to tape it to the box. And you don't have to tape it. That way you can always change it up as you go. I think I'm gonna leave it just like that and then I'm gonna put this one on the top. 
and then I'll show you what it looks like right next to my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Wow! It is life-size! Look at him! Just like in the sculptures we saw before, our min the minimalist sculpture I made is larger than my toy. It is made out of monochromatic color, like the purple, and it uses geometric shapes, and it is not representing anything in real life. I can't wait to see what you make with your sculpture.